Lao Tsai Stories Painted Skin A scholar surnamed Wang in Taiyuan was walking on the road in the morning when he met a girl with a bundle in her arms. Wang Sheng quickly ran a few steps and caught up with her. It turned out that she was a beautiful woman of 16 or 17, and he liked her very much. Wang Sheng asked her, Why do you walk alone on the road before dawn? The woman said, You are a passerby, and you can't share my worries for me, so why ask? Wang Sheng said, What worries do you have? I may be able to help, so I will not refuse. The woman said with a sad face, My parents were greedy for money and sold me to a wealthy family as a concubine. The eldest wife in that family was very jealous and scolded me in the morning. I can't stand it anymore and want to run away. Wang Sheng asked her, Where do you want to go? The woman said, I'm a fugitive, so I have a certain place to go. The doctor said, My home is not far from here, please come to my place and feel wrong. The woman agreed happily. Wang Sheng carried the baggage and things for her, and led her back home together. The woman looked around and saw no one else in the room, so she asked, Why don't you have any family members? Wang Sheng replied, This is my study. The woman said, This place is wonderful. If the master loves me, let me live, please keep the secret and don't reveal it to others. Wang Sheng agreed. Wang Sheng shared the bed with her that night. Wang Sheng hid her in a secret room, and no one knew about it, after many days. Later, Wang Sheng revealed this matter to his wife a little bit. When his wife Chen heard about it, she suspected that the woman was a fugitive concubine from a wealthy family, and advised Wang Sheng to send her away. But Wang Sheng insisted on not listening. One day, Wang Sheng went to the market by chance and met a Taoist priest. When the Taoist priest saw Wang Sheng, he was very surprised and asked, Have you met anyone recently? Wang Sheng replied, No, the Taoist priest said, You are surrounded by evil spirits all over your body, why do you still say you don't have it? Wang Sheng tried his best to argue that he didn't. The Taoist left with a sigh, and said, It's really incomprehensible. There are people in the world who are still obsessed with their obsessions until their death. Wang Sheng felt that his words were unusual, and he had some doubts about the woman. He changed his mind again, she was clearly a beautiful girl, how could she be a monster? I thought that the Taoist priest might use the excuse of suppressing monsters to get money. After a while, he walked to the door of the study, and saw that the door was stuck from the inside, so he couldn't get in. He had some doubts about this approach in his heart, so he climbed over a broken wall, and entered the yard only to find that the inner door was also closed. He tiptoed to the window to peek, and saw a ferocious ghost with a blue face and sharp and long teeth like Sawtooth. Depict, after finishing the painting, the evil spirit dropped the paintbrush, lifted up the human skin, and put the human skin on his body like shaking clothes, so he turned into a beautiful woman. After Wang Sheng saw this situation with his own eyes, he was terrified and crawled out on all fours like a wild animal. He hurried to find the Taoist priest, but the Taoist priest had disappeared. After searching everywhere, Wang Sheng met a Taoist priest in the suburbs. He knelt down in front of the Taoist priest and begged for help. The Taoist said, then let me drive it away. It's not easy to cultivate this thing. I just found a replacement and can be reborn as a human. I can't bear to hurt its life. Give the whisk to Wang Sheng and let him hang it at the door of the bedroom. When it was time to part, the Taoist made an appointment with Wang Sheng to meet at Qingdi Temple in the future. After Wang Sheng went back, he didn't dare to enter the study, so he slept in the inner room of the house with a whisk hung up. At one o'clock in the night, he suddenly heard a chirping sound outside the door. Wang Sheng was so frightened that he didn't even dare to take a peek, so he asked his wife to take a look quietly. I saw the woman walking over, and saw the fly fly hanging at the door, not daring to enter stood there gritting her teeth and left after a long time but after a while she came again and scolded sharply that Taoist is trying to scare me i am not willing to give up do you want me to spit out the meat i have eaten after finishing speaking she took off the whisk and tore it into pieces fragments smashed the bedroom door and rushed in the ghost directly climbed onto wang sheng's bed scratched wang sheng's chest and abdomen dug out his heart and left the wife wailed shrilly, the maid took a candle to take a light, 
and saw that Wang Sheng was dead, and his abdominal cavity was bloody and messy. His wife, Chen Shi, was too frightened to speak up, so she could only swallow her tears and shed tears. The next morning, Mrs. Chen sent Wang Sheng's younger brother Erlong to run and tell the Taoist priest. The Taoist said angrily, I felt pity for it, how dare this evil spirit be so rampant. Immediately followed Wang Sheng's younger brother to Wang Sheng's house. The woman has disappeared. The Taoist raised his head and looked around, and said, Fortunately, it hasn't escaped far. The Taoist asked again, Whose house is the south courtyard? Wang Erlong said, It's my house. The Taoist said, Now the ghost, it's at your house. Wang Erlong was very stunned, thinking that there was no such thing. The Taoist asked him, Has there ever been an unknown person? Wang Erlong said, I went to Kingdi Temple early in the morning to look for you, but I really don't know. Let me go home and ask. After finishing, he left. After a while, he came back and said, Sure enough, there is an old lady who came in the morning and wanted to be hired as a servant in my house. My wife kept her and she is still in my house. The Taoist said, That's the guy. So everyone went to Wang Erlong's house together. The Taoist stood in the middle of the courtyard with a wooden sword in his hand and shouted loudly, You evil spirit, pay me for my fly whisk. The Taoist chased after her and beat her with a wooden sword. The old lady fell, and the human skin cracked and fell off the ground with a bang, revealing the original shape of the evil spirit, lying on the ground and howling like a pig. The Taoist cut off the head of the evil spirit with a wooden sword, and its body turned into a puff of smoke, which surrounded the ground and formed a pile. The Taoist priest took out a gourd, unplugged it, and put it in the pile of smoke, only to hear a swish sound as if someone was inhaling through his mouth and the smoke was completely sucked by the gourd in a blink of an eye. The Taoist put the gourd in his mouth and put it in his bag. Everyone looked at the human skin on the ground again and saw eyebrows, eyes, hands, and feet, all of which were lacking. The Taoist priest rolled up the human skin, made a squeaky sound like a scroll, and put it in the bag, then bid farewell to everyone and prepared to leave. Mrs. Chen knelt down in front of the door, crying and begging the Taoist priest to use the method of resurrection to save Wang Sheng. The Taoist said he was powerless. Chen was even more distressed, kneeling on the ground and refusing to get up. The Taoist thought for a while and said, My spells are so weak that I really can't bring the dead back to life. Let me point you to a person who may be able to. Go ask him to try, and it should be effective. Chen asked, what is it, people? The Taoist said, There is a lunatic in the market, who often lies in the dung. You try to cow out to him and beg. If he insults Madam Madly Madam, don't be angry. Wang Erlong also knew the lunatic well, so he, after bidding farewell to the Taoist priest, he and his sister-in-law Chen went to find the lunatic. When I got there, I saw a beggar singing crazily on the road, his nose was three feet long and his body was so filthy and smelly that no one could approach him. Chen Shi knelt and moved in front of him with her knees. The beggar smiled and said, Does the beauty love me? Mrs. Chen told him the whole story. The beggar laughed again and said, Anyone can be your husband. What are you doing to save him? Mrs. Chen still begged again and again. The beggar said, What a strange thing. People come to beg me to save them after they die. Am I the king of Yama? After speaking, he angrily beat Mrs. Chen with a begging stick, and Mrs. Chen endured his severe beatings. At this time, the onlookers in the market gradually crowded like a wall. The beggar coughed up phlegm and saliva again, spat out a handful, raised it to Chen's mouth and said, Eat it. Don't be afraid of being insulted. Just swallow your nausea. I just felt that the phlegm swallowed into my throat, it was as hard as a ball of cotton wool. And it went down with a cracking sound, and it gathered in my chest and stopped. The beggar laughed again, and said, the beauty loves me. So he got up and left, ignoring Mrs. Chen. Chen Shi and Erlong followed him to the temple again. I wanted to approach him and beg, but I couldn't find him. They searched back and forth, but there was no trace, so they had to go home in shame and resentment. When Mrs. Chen returned home, 
She mourned her husband's tragic death and regretted the humiliation of licking other people's spittle. She wailed and begged herself to die immediately. She wanted to wipe off her husband's blood and collect his body. But her family members stood far away in fright, and no one dared to approach. Mrs. Chen had no choice but to pick up Wang Sheng's body by herself, tidy up the intestines that flowed out of her stomach, and cry loudly while cleaning up. When she was crying hoarsely, she suddenly felt like vomiting, and felt the hard lump gathered between her chest and abdomen suddenly gushing out of her throat. Before she could turn her head away, the thing had already fallen into Wang Sheng's chest cavity. Chen was surprised to see that it turned out to be a heart, and Wang Sheng's chest was beating chugs, steaming hot like smoke. Surprised, Mrs. Chen hurriedly closed Wang Sheng's chest with both hands and squeezed it together as hard as she could. When she loosened it a little, she saw strands of hot air coming out of the gap. Belly wrapped tightly, at this time, she touched the corpse with her hands again, and felt that it was getting warmer, so she covered Wang Shang with a quilt. In the middle of the night, she got up to visit and found that Wang Shang had some breath in his nostrils. At dawn the next day, Wang Shang came back to life. He only said, it's like a dream in a trance, and I just feel a dull pain in my stomach. Looking at the scratch place again, there was a hard scab the size of a copper coin. After a while, Wang Sheng recovered. Yi Shi said, People in the world are so stupid. It was clearly a monster, but he thought it was a beautiful woman. Stupid people are really stubborn. It was clearly advice, but he thought it was deceit. However, he loves other people's beauty and hunts it insatiably. And his wife will also lick and eat other people's saliva and treat it as a delicacy. People's good and evil will be rewarded according to the law of heaven, but the stupid and muddled people will never realize it. What apathy, the content of moral persuasion and punishment contained in painted skin is extremely rich. Such as ghosts turning into beauties to deceive, scholars being deceived because of lust. And the lust of a fisherman is finally retribution on his wife. At the same time, because the novel is indeed an excellent work in terms of artistic skills, such as the twists and turns of the story. The vivid language, especially the description of the evil ghost spreading human skin on the couch, and drawing it with a brush, the imagination is rich, surprised, sensational, and full of fables. Painted skin later became a fixed vocabulary in Chinese too. Describe the dazzling and charming tricks of ghosts and ghosts, 